because you have these black power Israelites. They believe that the so-called Native Americans, etc., which really all the Northern Kingdom, they're, they're what you would call Native Americans. You know, I don't like calling them Hispanics or Latinos, you know, but, um, you know, they they were in, in this land first, in these lands first. You know, uh, they were uh, in, in the Americas, you know, before the uh, so-called Europeans came. All right. So they're, they're what you would call Native Americans, even though they're really Israelites. OK. These black power Israelites think that, that uh, the other tribes are not Israelites because they didn't come to America on slave ships. You know, but what you have to understand is that these tribes were already here, you know. Uh, the, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah, when you read Deuteronomy 28 and 68, that is talking about them. You know, that, that is talking about the tribe of Judah. But what you have to understand is that the other tribes were already here. All right. And, and they went into slavery also. All right. And they went into slavery before the tribe of Judah did. All right. Judah, uh, Benjamin and Levi. But when you read Deuteronomy 28 and 68, that's talking about Judah coming to America on slave ships. All right. But th this truth is not only about the tribe of Judah. It's about all the other tribes as well, man. And the other tribes went into slavery, too, specifically the northern kingdom, the people that you call uh, uh, Latinos, that you call Latinos, that you call Native Americans. They went into slavery, too. They were just uh, uh, sent to uh, Spain. They were sent to Spain in uh, slavery. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to get into this lesson, though. And I hope you sincere brothers are edified. All right. Now, I'm in the book, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism by John Henrik Clark. All right. So I'm going to read from this book and I'm also going to read from the document, The Spanish Conquest of the Tainos. All right. Now, you can uh, look both of these pieces of information up. All right. You can get this book and uh, that document. But before I go into uh, any of those pieces of information i'm going to uh read this document which i can't find on the internet and when i printed it out it didn't give me a uh, website all right so you know but all this information is the same man so you know you can pretty much find it anywhere but i'm going to read the third par paragraph i'm going to read the third paragraph and uh, uh here it is it says before he left spain for his second voyage he had, it's talking about Christopher Columbus, which his real name is uh, Cristobal Cologne, and he was a so-called Jew, all right? He was a fake Jew. Before he left Spain for his second voyage, he had been directed by Ferdinand, Ferdinand and Isabella to maintain friendly, even loving re relations with the natives. However, during his second voyage, he sent a, le a letter to the monarchs proposing to enslave some of the native peoples, specifically the Caribs, and that's where you get the word Caribbean, all right? The people of the Caribbean islands, which they were Israelites too. They were just more uh, rugged, you know, more rough on the grounds of their aggressiveness. However, it seemed as if he had other intentions as he previously had used Taino slaves for prostitution, you know, so he had got a lot of the uh, Taino women, even men, you know, because uh, Columbus was a homosexual and he used them for uh, pro prostitution. OK, although his petition was refused by the crown in February 1495, Columbus took 1600 Arawak, a different tribe who were hunted by the Carib as slaves. He shipped 560 of them as slaves to Spain. You see that 200 died en route, probably of, of disease and of the re remainder, half were ill when they arrived. You know, so that's the point. Columbus shipped 560 of, uh, of the, the Arawak people. All right. Of, uh, you, you could say Tainos. OK, because, you know, the, uh, the the different tribes of the islands were, were separated. Some of them were called Caribs. Some were called Arawak, and a, uh, a a sect of the Arawak were called the uh, Tainos. Okay, 
and it says uh, how half of them were, were ill when they arrived. And it says after legal proceedings, the survivors were released in order to be shipped home, which, you know, I, I personally don't believe that. I believe a lot of them stayed, you know. I believe a lot of them uh, stayed. But the whole point is that Columbus uh, shipped 560 of them, 560 of them to Spain. All right. So they went into slavery too on ships. All right. So uh, that's the point, man. Okay, but uh, we're going to keep moving. We're going to move fast. Now I'm going to read in this document first, and I'm going to end with uh, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust. Okay. Now we're in the uh, the document, the Spanish conquest of the Tainos. Okay, and uh, we're just going to re uh, read the part that I have, uh, uh, you know, highlighted. Okay, and it says. On Christmas night, his his biggest ship, the Santa Maria, sank on the harbor of the island. With his remnants, Columbus built the fortress of the Navidad. He left 39 men at the fortress and sailed to Spain on January 16, 1493, taking with him six Taino uh, captives and a cargo of parrots, plants, and gold. All right, so... He, he took with them six Taino captives. Another word for captive is, is slave. Okay. You know, and he took other, uh, you know, uh, riches and, and animals and uh, different things. But that's the point. All right. And, and he went to Spain. Okay. So we're going to keep moving. All right. Let's see. And, uh. Here it is. Here it is again. And we just read this uh, in the other document. It, it says he introduced Indian slavery, suggesting that it would be lucrative enough to compensate for the meager supply of gold found. In 1495, he and his men went on a raid in the interior of Hispaniola, capturing as many as 1500 Taino men, women and children. Columbus picked the 500 best specimens and sent them to Spain. 200 of these five, 500s, Taino died en route to Spain. Columbus' reaction was to exclaim, let us in the holy, excuse me, let us in the name of the Holy Trinity go on sending all the slaves that can be sold. Uh, send them where? To, to Spain. Send them to Spain. All right. And like I said, we just read this. And uh, and this piece of information, they said how they let the rest of them go free. You know, you had 200 that died en route and, and half were ill when they arrived. But, you know, they were they were uh, released in order to be shipped home. I don't believe that crap, man. You know, I personally don't believe it. You know, I, b I believe that they uh, stayed and they and they served slavery there. All right. But but that's the point. That's the point right there. So it was 200 of them uh, that arrived there. OK, and they were sold into slavery. OK. And you had a man by the name of uh, Kao Nabo, Kao Nabo. All right. Which he was a, uh, a, a Taino chief. OK. And we'll read a little bit about him. And it says, uh, let's see. Cause I don't want to read all of it. We'll just get, get to the point. We'll get to the point. It says, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll read as much as we can. It says with Columbus, when Columbus left his men in charge of, of the Navidad, he had no doubt that they would be safe for he perceived the Taino as a friendly and amiable race, which Taino, the word Taino, it means, uh, a good people. It means good people. Besides, if the native did become hostile, he was certain that his men would overcome them for the indigenous population was destitute of weapons, go naked and, and very cowardly. Which that, that's a damn lie, man. The Taino were peaceful, but, but you know, they, they also got in Columbus's men ass, man. They, they don't tell that part of history. You know, they were easily overtaken because Columbus and his men had had weapons, you know. And they had uh, 
uh, iron armor and different things, but they weren't cowardly, man. When he returned to the Navidad, he, he learned that the Taino had killed all his men in a revolt led by Kai Nobo. See, like I said, the Taino had gotten had gotten their ass, man. You know, they, they, they revolted. Chief of the Maguana, a Kaki Quat in the center of the island, theft of, of their property, the, the rape of their women, as well as an aware, awareness that the powerful strangers intended to remain in their island were the main reasons the Taino turned to hostility. Right, because the Spaniards, the, the Spaniards, which th those were uh, Columbus's men, they, they raped their women and they stole their property, man. You know, so the uh, Tainos re revolted, okay? Now, that's enough of this information. But we're, we're speaking about this man, uh, Kao Nabo, all right? Because basically you're going to see what's going to happen, okay? We're just going to get to the point. We're going to get to the point here. It says, we'll start right here. Speaking about the Taino, they had never seen horses before and thought that the Cavaliers were gods. You know, which that's true in a sense. They thought that the Spaniards were angels from heaven. Okay. And that's why they received them peaceably. Aided with the noise of cannons, the guns and the dogs, the Spanish led by, uh, what uh Ho Hojeda Hojeda turned the Vega real plain into a scene of massacre. Ka Kao Nabo's brother and other Taino leaders were imprisoned. It was decided that Kao Nabo and his brother were to be sent to Spain. Kao Nabo was deported to Spain, but his ship sank at sea and he died not far from the coast of Hispaniola. According to the legend, the Taino deliberately sank the ship, deporting their leader to Spain in a last attempt to resist the oppression of Columbus and the Spaniards. All right. So uh, the, the Spaniards was were, were going to send Kyle Nabo and his brother to Spain, but but the uh, the ship sank. So it, it didn't get there, you know, so uh, they died in, in a route, you know, but the point is, is that they were going to be shipped there. All right. So that's the point, man. You know, and, and I was harping on the point earlier that uh, uh, Columbus had brought six, six uh, Taino captives to uh, to Spain. Well, they did that to uh, parade them there. You know, the uh, the apostles of GMS went into that before on the highways. You know, they have the show uh, the Borgias. OK, which I'm actually reading a book right now it's called the family and it's about the borgia family uh and it's about mario puzo and i'm actually looking for it in this book but but um you know they they were paraded in spain the, these taino captives so i'm going to come back with another lesson shalom